HitFilm 3 Pro combines powerful editing features with an impressive array of tools for compositing and effects creation. I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and in this video we are going to get familiar with the basic editing tools so you can start creating your own projects. If you want to follow along with me, please download the project file accompanying this tutorial. Now let's dig into the editing tools. First, we want to understand how the pieces of the interface relate to editing and to one another. Editing starts in the media panel, where we import the footage we will be working with. From there, we will use the trimmer to trim the video clip down to what we need and add it to the timeline. Everything on the timeline will appear in the viewer. The media panel also allows you to organize your assets. Right click on the file ending in 12 and select Rename. If we name it something more logical, like Walking Away, we can quickly remind ourselves of what shot the file contains. Now find file 23 and click the cog next to it to open its properties. Here we can view and edit other information about the clip as well, including its frame rate and resolution. Rename this file to Engine. Now rename file 25 to Waiting. Then select file 26 and press F2 on the PC or Return on the Mac to rename it to Left Behind. We can also sort and categorize our assets. We only have a few files in this project, but as you work on projects with large numbers of assets, organization becomes even more important. Click the New Folder button and name the folder Car. Find all the shots that include the car and drag them into the folder. If you want to see more of your assets at once, then you can switch to List Mode. You can also quickly sort all your assets by media type using Group By Media. There is also an Arrange By menu and a toggle to alphabetize ascending or descending. Take a minute to play with the various options. When you are done, let's all switch back to Preview Mode, Group By Folder, and Arrange By Name. Now click Waiting to open it in the trimmer. The trimmer is where we select the portion of the clip that we want to use in our project. At the bottom right corner of the trimmer you can change the scale. If you want to see a pixel accurate view of the clip, to check sharpness or detail for example, you can switch to 100%. Scale to Fit will give you the largest image that will fit in the current trimmer panel. At the bottom of the trimmer panel we have two time codes. On the right is the duration of the clip. On the left is the current position of the playhead, which will update as the playhead moves. You can use the play button to play and pause the clip, or use the space bar to start and stop playback. You can also grab the playhead and drag it through the clip, which is called scrubbing. This is useful for moving through the clip quickly and for placing the playhead at a specific time code in the clip. You can also use the period and comma keys with the pointy brackets to move in either direction one frame at a time. These two buttons will do the same thing. We can select a specific portion of our clip using the in and out points. They can be set using these buttons or the I and O keys on the keyboard. Play the clip and press I and then O as the clip plays. Stop playback and note the lighter gray section in the scrubber bar of the trimmer, which begins when we pressed I and ends where we pressed O. This entire bar represents the duration of the clip, and the light gray shows the section that is contained between our in and out points. You can use the loop button to toggle looping playback of the selected area. Move the playhead now to just before the selected area and click the in point button, and our in point is moved to the current location of the playhead. Hover over the scrubber bar and a tooltip will pop up showing the time code for the in and out points and the duration of our selection. Now if we drag this clip from the trimmer to the timeline, only the selected portion is used. The first time you add a clip to the timeline, HitFilm may ask you if you want to set the editor settings to match the clip. In most cases, you will want to select Yes. Once it is on the timeline, the clip appears in the viewer. The viewer is where we can see the entire project we are building on the timeline. You'll notice that the viewer has many of the same features as the trimmer. 
The transport controls here play back whatever is on the timeline. We have the same scale menu and timecode displays, but we have some new controls along the top. The Select tool can be used to select things and reposition them. Change the scale to 100%, then select the Hand tool. The Hand lets you pan around within the viewer, changing the visible area without actually moving the selected clip. When using the Select tool, you can also access the Hand by right-clicking in the viewer, which is often a more convenient way to pan around your image. Try right-clicking and dragging around, and when you are done, set the Scale menu back to Scale to Fit. The Channels menu lets you control which color or alpha channels are displayed, and the Quality menu allows you to adjust the viewer resolution to speed up rendering. The Options menu lets you change the background color, or export a still image of the current frame. The Editor Timeline is where you sequence your video and audio clips, and add transitions or titles to build your project. Each project in HitFilm will have one editor timeline. Use the zoom slider at the bottom left to zoom in on our clip. Using the selection tool, drag on the middle of the clip to move it. As your cursor nears the end of the clip, notice that it changes icons, and we can now drag the end of the clip to shorten or lengthen it. Now select the slice tool and click in the middle of the clip. Switch back to the Selection tool by pressing V on the keyboard, then select one part of the clip and delete it. At the top of the interface, click the Undo button to restore the deleted segment, then click Undo again to remove the cut. If you need to undo multiple steps, the History panel lets you view a log of every action you have taken, so you can easily step backward to a specific point in your project. The View Options menu for the Editor Timeline gives you control over how your video and audio tracks are displayed. Change the video size to Extra Large. You can control the height of the video and audio track separately here, to either see the contents as clearly as possible, or fit as many tracks as possible onto your screen. You can also drag the divider between the video and audio track sections. Let's add some more clips to the timeline now. Click the Walking Away clip to open it in the trimmer, and use the techniques we discussed earlier to set the in point to 318 exactly, and the out point to 810. Drag it to the timeline, and notice that as we approach the end of the first clip, they snap together, and a red line appears, letting us know that there is no space between them. This snapping behavior can be turned on and off using this button with the magnet icon. Now open Engine in the trimmer, and decide what portion of the clip you want to use. Set the in and out points. Click in the timeline and move the playhead to the beginning by pressing the Home key on your keyboard. The Home and End keys will take you straight to either end of the timeline. Now, with your playhead at zero, click the Overlay Clip button. All the existing clips remain exactly where they are, and the new clip is written right over the top of them. In this case, however, I'd like to keep all of the waiting clip, so click Undo to remove the clip we just added, and move the playhead back to frame zero. Now, click the Insert Clip button on the trimmer. All of our other clips on the timeline will be nudged to the right to make room for this new clip. The Insert Clip button will always create space at the current playhead location to fit in your selected clip. The playhead also moves to the end of the inserted clip, so you can easily place another clip immediately after it. On the keyboard, the Page Up and Page Down buttons can be used to jump between edit points on the timeline. Experiment with using these keys to move through your edit, then use the Page Down key to work your way back to the end of the Walk Away clip. Use the trimmer to select a portion of Left Behind, and use the Insert Clip button to add it to the timeline. Experimenting more with these tools will help you get comfortable with assembling an edit in HitFilm 3 Pro. Our next video will look deeper into composite shots and working with layers. Until then, thank you very much for watching.